In the late 80s, things seemed great. We were travelling to work by roller skate, listening to Wham! while saving up for the latest bit of high-tech kit, when BAM! Out of nowhere, some scientists with fuzzy hair decided to scare us all with this strange thing called climate change. It seemed that all our super western progress would collapse into a tragic mess unless we stopped churning out so much CO2, so some of us started worrying about how much we flew, trying to commute by cycle like all the green campaign groups told us to, but although we recycled really damn hard, the fossil fuel industry just grew and grew, and politicians kept telling us how much they cared while building more roads and runways everywhere, and so it's no surprise that global emissions continued to rise. And so the planet warmed, and the storm waters rose higher, but it was all going to be fine, because in December 2009, the world's governments would meet in Copenhagen. And if we just signed enough petitions to politicians, they'd all agree to make climate change history. Except, despite all the hype, there was no climate deal, which made a lot of us feel a frustration we could barely express. How could they leave us in this mess, on track to runaway climate change from which there'd be no coming back? But hold on. It wasn't over yet. There were other voices who'd been there all along, including people who had no choice but to take a stand because fossil fuels and climate change were poisoning their lands. They were saying the talks were always doomed while those who profit from the problem were sat in the room. When fossil fuel companies turning over turnovers bigger than the GDPs of most countries are interfering with government policies, dishing out millions to politicians, when a third of UK government ministers have links to these industries, is it really a mystery why all those climate summits never seem to quite agree, or why fossil fuels receive 20 times more government subsidy than clean energy? Now, the droughts and the storms have reached all of our doors, and more and more people are starting to see the real enemies. Because a politics that's about people, not privilege and profit, makes sense. Not just for the climate, but everything else. Equality, poverty, lack of democracy, we can bring all these issues together. Because the boardrooms that hoard such unfair wealth and power are the ones who are screwing the weather. Now the challenge is big, and we need to get clever, but people all over the planet are rising. Not just signing petitions and sorting recycling, but blocking the fossil fuel industry's power. In the streets, in the courts, in the classrooms and fields. Stopping coal plants in China, Canadian pipelines, fossil investments and sponsorship deals. Every community energy scheme that grows from a dream to a dot on the map. Every fracking proposal that's scrapped. Every victory reminds us to hope that a movement of millions can challenge their power. And this is the hour to act. In fact, there's just one question left. Are you part of it yet? Here are three things you can do. Join the Global Divestment Council. Stop our money from funding the fossil fuel industry and to kick oil sponsorship out of arts and culture. Support the frontline communities directly affected by fossil fuel extraction in their fight for climate justice. Share this video to help spread the truth about how we can win this.